What's up YouTube? I'm John Wheels and today I'm going to be showing you the Twin Carbon Arc Torch which is a nice alternative to an acetylene rosebud. So basically you have two carbon rods pointed I'd say roughly 90 some sort of angle towards each other so they're pointing out and what you do is you have some sort of slider mechanism or something to um, touch these rods off and kind of maintain a small arc in between the two rods so you can see I can slide this up and down and it makes a horseshoe arc shape that basically acts as a big heat source um, so you can just use your standard um, carbon arc gouging uh, rods in here with different sizes for different heats I guess it was a very old uh, technology so this is a 20th century welders um, antique that I bought off of uh, eBay so you can find different styles but they all kind of operate in this way and they would come with a alternating current uh, welder usually like a homeowner buzz box that sort of thing um, and so uh, like your Lincoln tombstones those sort of things and um, there would be a way for a very crude method of maybe cutting metal but mostly would be for um, heating so that uh, back a long time ago if you were just to buy one machine you could buy your uh, welder and then the salesman would maybe throw in one of these and help you crudely cut some metal so you could make your farm implements or whatever but acetylene uh, to get oxygen acetylene the hoses the regulators the torches um, the different tips the tip cleaner uh, the cart all of that added up can be really expensive especially if you're just like a hobbyist like me and so uh, this is a great alternative because the carbon rods are super cheap I think I got this uh, arc torch for somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred bucks and then I picked up an old AC buzz box craftsman welder for about a hundred bucks so all in all with the rods and stuff maybe I'm into this uh, 250 bucks but on top of that, uh, if you already had an old AC welder, then you're really not a lot of investment here. You just gotta keep your eye out for the uh, twin carbon arc torches. So you have to use alternating current. So I tried it originally on my DC stick welder and because something with the current, um, one rod will kind of burn away a lot faster than the other one because um, part of the reason you would switch your polarity when you're welding uh, stick well stick welding is DC electrode positive and then TIG welding is DC electrode negative it has something to do with the amount of heat in your workpiece versus in your electrode so an alternating current it's equal between the two so that's why this has to be used on alternating current all right so I have my craftsman old AC welder um, I have it plugged into 240 volt and then um, the larger range on here doesn't work but it doesn't matter we're not going to be up in the super high um, amperages so I have it set the dial super sticky but I have it maybe like 50 amps that lower range the one on the left is uh, the one we're in right now um, we'll play around with the amps, but uh, it doesn't matter a ton. So then I have my leads coming out, and then I have my ground clamp hooked up to one of these guys, and then my uh, stinger hooked up to the other one. And I just have this little Gatorade bottle just as an extra added protection so that on the ground um, I don't accidentally arc the um, one end to the other. So, um, when you turn it on, you got to make sure that these aren't just sitting on a table. Um, and so, set them down like a glove or something so it's insulated. Um, we have this concrete stake here. And uh, there's no way I'd be able to just bend that with just a hammer and the vise with that being three-quarter, I think. Um, but, got my anvil ready. And if I heat it up... Right in the middle, you can get your localized heat. So better than a forge where the whole thing would get hot. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that now.
quarter inch carbons weren't quite cutting it at uh we're at like 50 amps so we're gonna bump it up to the uh three eighths carbons and um see how they do now i can tell it definitely got it hotter but still not like glowing orange or anything so let's give it another shot as efficient as a acetylene torch but it does something gets it hot does leave a little bit of carbon on the end there um shouldn't hurt anything let's see how easy it comes off all right so there's a little bit of carbon comes right off no big deal um yeah one more time and then I'll show you how hot it is by um, bending it over here at the anvil. some three quarter inch bar in half so uh, obviously wouldn't be able to do that um, without some considerable uh, machinery uh, without any heat input so you know if you want to bend something over works pretty well a little bit more time consuming um, but really not a bad deal now let me show you you know, the three quarters a lot to heat up. Uh, let's let's take a look at uh, some sheet metal. See how that does. All right, let's see what happens to this little piece of sheet metal. you could cut something technically with this like you know with enough time enough carbons yeah you could probably cut some especially thinner things uh, but obviously it's not a, a clean cut by any means but um, it will melt right through that and if you switch over to the um, 
smaller carbons but you could just simply heat it up so uh and lower the amperage let's just try that uh for a sec here Alrighty, let's test how gentle i can be when heating this guy up because it's just a little thin sheet metal uh i don't know my gauges real well but you know it's thin sheet metal let's see if we can heat it up without blowing a hole in it saw that nice localized heat just across there i mean obviously it cools down quickly because it's sheet metal but uh you can be delicate with this and so um you take your time you can really just modulate uh with, with an acetylene torch i feel like your heat kind of just, just keeps going in a line to a degree but uh you can really control your heat just simply by uh how far away are you from the material um so yeah that's the carbon arc torch all right so let's talk about amperage uh i would say quarter inch i would use about 50 amps and three eighths i would use 100 amps uh those you know you could fluctuate probably as much as 10 amps and really not have a huge uh issue i think what happens is if you let's say take quarter inch for example if you go above uh 50 amps you're not really gaining any more heat um, it's just gonna be burning away those carbons faster so uh, there's real no really no reason to go over that amount but you probably could get 5 16 and then just doing a little math halfway in between I guess 75 amps if you're gonna go with 5 16 but I think uh, there's no real reason I think if you got your quarter inch for your smaller stuff and your 3 8 for your bigger stuff then you'd be kind of set. Um, now you probably could go above three eighths, but then it comes into question um, how much can your torch handle? You know, if you look at this, this is just like some uh, steel, like some real thin crimped steel or whatever um, at these ends. And then the cables themselves are not, you know, super heavy duty welding cables rated at 200 amps or something so you just don't want to push it so i wouldn't really i think there's no reason to go above 100 amps especially for anything home hobby now in terms of uh heating up the carbon arc torch is amazing um i think you can't beat the price um and the convenience of it but i think in terms of cutting your best option is going to be a plasma cutter so i got a best arc uh, seventh gen or whatever for maybe 250 bucks uh, it works great universal consumables and it has a pilot arc there are a million videos on YouTube about plasma cutters uh, I would guess I learned from Pete's tools but I'm sure there are a million more uh, he's a cool guy he reviews a bunch of plasma cutters but anyway yeah I would not really waste your time with cutting material with the uh, carbon arc torch I would say it's pretty much for heating so and an oxyacetylene torch, you can heat and cut uh, for the carbon arc torch. Carbon arc, <laughs> that's a tongue twister, isn't it? The carbon arc torch, I would say you can heat and then plasma torch, uh, plasma cutter, you can cut. So between the two, you have both operations covered. So that's how I've been able to get by without getting any expensive uh, acetylene tanks um, and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions because I don't see much info about these on YouTube. So um, I'm not a pro, but I figured I'd give this a shot. And so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.